Well, I presume it's to do with things like online banking or using a credit card online. I, I guess to me it means just um, protecting yourself online, you know, using uh, having good passwords, don't use the same password for everything. Um, yeah, antivirus software, um, firewall protection. Technical programs to block hackers. I think you hear so much about it being uh, people losing their money. I'm not sure how much that is hype and how much it's not. I don't really, I'm not really as aware as I should be of how secure my connection is. Internet safety is a big problem, I think, in, uh, in China. There are some much more trespass to computers uh, every day. Ну, на самом деле, довольно успешно и своими силами какими-то. Ну, до последнего не верится, что что-то такое случится, в принципе. Всегда надеешься на лучшее. Живешь и не ждешь. Do you remember there was like some instance I feel where like somebody did use the internet as terrorism? I may be wrong. Seems kind of far-fetched to me, honestly. The internet has come a long way since the late 60s. What began in 1969 as a network between four West Coast universities has far outstripped its creator's wildest expectations. The World Wide Web was only invented in 1990, but in just 20 years it has transformed communications, business and modern society, becoming a fundamental part of our everyday lives. I get asked a lot the question, why is cybersecurity uh, important? I remember I went to a dinner and what someone said, well, cybersecurity, that, what do you mean, want to talk about my computer? And we're like, no, well, yes, we want to talk about your computer, but we want to talk about your daughter's smartphone. And we like to talk about ATM machines, your doctor getting your record off the line, and about who controls the traffic lights when you go to stop. The internet has entered almost every aspect of modern life, and in the process has broken down barriers in communication, in commerce, in education, in public services and in politics. But this new connectedness brings with it new vulnerabilities. I think we are really in a cyber era and then there are lots of um, challenges as well as opportunities. In one way the pervasive connectivity that we have uh, accepted puts us in immediate contact with the worst in human nature. And not the worst in human nature, but the worst in human nature of five billion people. In the, in the early 80s, cybersecurity was, was barely on the, on the landscape at all. It was usually not that damaging. It would be more prank um, type of stuff, but it's certainly all business nowadays. It's about money, it's about profit. Um, I haven't seen a uh, prank hack uh, in a very, very, very long time. The, the latest reports show that uh, some of the con some countries, including Brazil, for example, uh, the money earned from cyber crime has surpassed the money earned from the drug trade. Uh, nowadays you can make a complete hacking system out of a cell phone. So someone sitting there innocuously using their iPhone could actually be hacking you. Uh, we have a great technologies to protect private data but often these technologies don't make it in the market or they don't meet user adoption. By taking advantage of security flaws, a hacker can steal a user's identity or gain access to bank details. Criminals, terrorists, even hostile nations can use botnets made up of millions of computers to bring down company websites, or, as happened in Estonia in 2007, to disrupt an entire country. Even the physical infrastructure of the web is vulnerable. Damage to choke points in the undersea cable network which carries most intercontinental web traffic could black out whole regions for commercial or political advantage. And the Internet's great strength, its ability to work seamlessly across national borders, makes purely national solutions impossible. If we don't have some resilience in the system, then a failure in one area will cascade into others, and before you know it, you will not be getting food, you will not be getting money. I, I, I don't think that, for instance, the United States is 100% uh, safe from the threat of cyber attack. I'm not sure that Russia is, is safe, and so I think this is still a big and global problem for everybody. Never before in history has mankind adopted a technology and become so completely dependent upon it in such a short amount of time. What is not clear is if there is a failure of this technology will there be reversible consequences. We've not only adopted a dependency very rapidly, but we've not maintained a plan B.
Uh, see, many people ask, who actually, whose problem is this? Whose responsibility is this? And really, it's at three levels. First is the private sector. This is, in essence, uh, cyber is a private sector initiative. Private industry owns and operates more than 85% of the in infrastructure. Uh, secondly, are the public sector, our governments. Uh, governments do are going to have to play some kind of more of a role than they're playing now. The international policy component that is absolutely essential is far, far behind the technological advances that are just racing ahead. And the third is actually the netizen. It's the, it's the citizen themselves, the user of it. Uh, all of us have responsibilities. What EWI is doing is bringing all these elements together. And we need to, first of all, build up um, a platform of trust. A lot of the confrontations and worries and fears are, are based on, uh, have arisen because of the lack of, of, of trust, a lack of understanding. The East West Institute for 30 years has been about building trust. If there was any one subject in the last few years where it was absolutely clear there was not only no trust, but where everyone agreed you could not have any international cooperation, it was on cybersecurity. In Europe is the same, in the United States is the same. It's very difficult to talk uh, and just to cooperate uh, for the state bodies and the private companies and individuals. It is absolutely important to create dialogue. We have to talk, we have to talk about it. The stepping stones to building trust are first of all to, to have some modest successes together. So for example, uh, many people said counterintuitively, we said China and the United States, let's get our top experts together, let's get the governments engaged, and let's actually try to find a way to deal with specific problems that are, that are a problem for both of us. Then the, from larger part, how do we begin to engage the international community, uh, uh, private and public sector, to actually work together? We can't solve all the problems all at once, but we need to take the first step. The EWI has, has got this global reach. And with that, embracing those ideas and articulating them to the global decision makers has got to be the tool for the future.